What's up guys, I'm Prora Texas back with a brand new Minecraft video. Today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make your very own Minecraft Pocket Edition server. All you're going to need is one simple app and it is Server Maker for Minecraft Pocket Edition. Link to that will be down in the description below. And that's literally pretty much the only app you need. And let's get into it guys. Alright guys, so this right here is what the app looks like when you first get on, and it won't look exactly like this because when you first get on, you're going to have this screen right here that says create new server, and you're going to click on that, and then you can put in the name of your server. I'm just going to put in tutorial, uh, that, that should work, tutorial, right there, and then you're going to put in your in-game name. My in-game name is improbable Trex. So I'm going to put that right there and then you're going to click this little green thing that says create server. Now it's going to create your server and then it's going to say your server has been created. Now when once it's created you're going to click on it and this one right here is the one I just created should be. And this is what it's going to look like. This is the IP and address of your server, this is the port and this is the version. Now you can actually put your server into older versions just like this right here. I mean you can go all the way back to 0 0.16 which is quite a while ago. I would recommend always updating your server to be the newest server or the newest available one and you can change the IP and address and port and all this stuff but it does cost credits right now I have 994 credits and it costs about 20 per day but I have a ton of plugins now, there's a ton of stuff you can do with this app you got server maintenance you can reboot your server you can reset and ban and unban players you can do all this stuff from the console now but this is what the app is called when you run a server it is called the console now there's tons of stuff you can do there's tutorial that's a name you can change the name you can your OVPs and admins you can you can only add these from the console you can't do this while in game you have to do it from the console you can change the map type and all this stuff the language of the server your message of the day like when you're putting on the server and it pops up below the name like what the server is and stuff and also you can turn off donation reminder I would not recommend doing this because it doesn't pop up that much and it can get you a lot of donations that can go really far with helping you keep your server running if you had a lot of plugins now these are some of the plugins usually normal features and plugins that you don't have to pay for this is the amount of people that can join your server which is five you can up this all these up to 400 players it does cost a lot though it costs 2500 credits a day I would recommend just starting off with 10 because it's just a regular normal 10 credits a day that's what I would recommend since you, you're making a new server you don't have a lot of people on it yet I would wait also you're probably gonna want to disable the register user login because of 1.2.5 I think or 1.2.0 something like that where you have to sign in with the Xbox so there's no longer really a need for this right here also you can whitelist your server I would recommend whitelisting it when you first make your server so you can get on and build everything and then take off whitelist now you're gonna want to set spawn protection because there is a ton of reefers on the server every server and people that are just there to bring you down so definitely turn that on and land protection as well you can do this so people can like claim lands or, or you can claim lands and protect areas like shops and different stuff like that custom ranks you're gonna want this if you're gonna make like ranks like VIP MVP elite stuff like that netherworld I would recommend not adding the netherworld it's really not that necessary and it can cause a lot of lag redstone I would also keep this disabled disabled because it is just incredible amounts of lag mobs I would recommend enabling those if you're creating a survival server if you're not then there's no real need for that changing weather that doesn't really cause much now here's some of the premium features you will have to pay for all of these one of the most important features I would say buying is world edit if you're creating a large world and you're gonna have a lot of stuff in it definitely buy world edit you're gonna need that it's just I personally it has been the most helpful premium feature ever I just absolutely love it it's a ton of different features you can add for every different type of server economy you can add a HUD where it pops up like location kills all kinds of different stuff you can actually customize the HUD I think to put up stuff out right there keep inventory that's like if you die you keep all your stuff but as you can see there's a ton of different pop-ups and stuff right here and blood effects I've not actually used that one but I think it might be pretty cool for a PvP server it, like spews blood everywhere every time you kill someone custom commands you can make your own commands and stuff like that and void teleport a bunch of different stuff like right here 
So we're going to go back and look at world management, just different stuff like that to manage world and server behavior. Users, I won't, I don't really recommend a whole lot of these because they're not really, really useful other than like chat filter and anti-chat and AFK, AFK kick maybe. That's probably the mainly useful ones. Other than these, not really necessary to be honest. I don't really see the point in the rest of these. Other than time bands, that could be useful. But I don't use it on my server. I just like full bands and then like bring them back if necessary. And this can actually be pretty cool. Player kits. I actually have that on my server. Server love. I'm not actually used that one. I'm not sure what that is. PvP arena. That could be very useful for a PvP server. Combat logger. Like that is actually very useful for survival servers and stuff. And PvP. So people can't just log off. It prevents you from logging off or it automatically kills you for 30 seconds after you get hit or you hit a person. Kill rate, I would recommend enabling this because it keeps up with the player stats, like how many kills they have, how many deaths, stuff like that. Server channels, I don't see the use in these to be honest. That's just my opinion, but you know, it depends, really depends on the server you're using. So that was user, social and PvP, stuff like that. So we're gonna check out mobs. There's a few things you can do with this. Slappers, if you're gonna have like a lot of different like warps and stuff in your server, I'd recommend slappers because you can just tap them and it takes you to a warp. You can customize them. It's like NPCs and stuff like that. Like put different skins and stuff on them. Very useful. Tap to do. I'm not really sure what that is. Never used it, so I'm not really gonna go into because I don't want to be giving false information and stuff. Pets. You can like purchase pets and stuff, and they'll follow you around in different servers and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Now items, 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 items. You can unban certain items because like lava and water and stuff like that, they don't really work unless you unban them. So I would recommend using this if you're gonna have like survival and stuff like that, where you're gonna need items like that. So definitely get that for certain types of servers. Just, just know what's banned and what's not banned. So when you first get on your server, you can just look through the inventory and see what's not there, and those are the items that are banned. Chest locks, you can purchase this so people can lock their chest and they can't get raided and their chest can't get destroyed, I don't think. <clears throat> chest shops. Now, you can make shops and stuff, like if you have an economy plug-in where people can buy and sell stuff, you can use that so people can, like, or when you're making a shop, you can, like, put chest and people just open the chest and buy what they need. Item display, you can use this also when making shops. You can, like, display items in cases and it's really, really cool. It looks really useful. <clears throat> I've thought about getting it on my server but it was just easier just to do chest a lot simpler crate keys now this is actually really really cool <clears throat> I had them on my other server and what this is people can <clears throat> find crate keys and stuff and then they got go to spawn or wherever you have the chests at, or the crates and people can unlock them and get stuff like really cool stuff that you put in them it's really cool I think a way to like give back to the people that play on your server Admin and maintenance. Now, this is very useful for your server and for the staff on your server. Now, if you don't have staff, I would highly recommend getting staff. People that you trust. Don't just pick random players that beg for staff. Just pick people you trust or people that are really active and you see a lot on your server and people that follow the rules. Maybe if you want, like, have a staff application. I have a staff application for my server. With status sign, you can, like, show on the server where and how much lag or how many people is on the server. And if there's a, how much lag or anything's on the server. I would recommend getting that. It costs like 800 credits, nothing much. <clears throat> inventory, see this is available so you can see what's in other people's inventory. VIP slots, I don't really recommend this because it's not really useful. People can purchase actual slots if the server's full. They can buy server slots for themselves. Like let's say you have 10 people on the server and the maximum's 10. Well, now there's 12 because there's two people that have VIP slots clear lag you can use this if there's a lot of lag on the server you can do slash clear uh, clear L I think or slash CL and it clears lag last scene I don't really see the purpose in this but you can see when the last time someone was on like if there's hackers and stuff I guess you could use them against that block logger I have no idea what that is I think it's where you can set where blocks like lo lock. I have no idea to be honest I'm not even gonna go into that this right here, admin fun. I really, really like this. You can purchase lucky blocks and stuff. They're just so fun. Admin fun. I'm not exactly sure what li admin fun is. Lightning strike. You can turn sticks into like lightning sticks where you tap stuff and lightning will like blow out of everywhere. And it's actually really, really cool. One of my favorite is probably I control you. I'm actually going to go into this and it's really, really cool. You can control other people and other players. Only the staff can do this. Not everyone can do this. You do this by doing ICU control and then the name. It isn't just ICU Tebos or whatever the player name is. It's ICU Control and then the player name. 
Walk trail, I don't know what that is, never used it. Bouncy blocks, this makes blocks like shoot you up into the air when you walk over them. Really, really cool. This is another lightning stick as well. And that's pretty much the same as lightning strike, just with the stick and stuff. But anyway guys, this is pretty much the server. And also there are the services and stuff you can use as well. A lot of different services that are very, very useful, like login notifications. It tells you, like, a, if you have it on your phone, the app, it will send you a notification when someone logs on. I do not recommend this because this probably could get really, really annoying. This right here, Prevent Sleep. This is probably one of the most important services if you're going to have a server that runs 24-7. Because otherwise, if no one's on your server for a few hours, then it will shut your server down. You have to come on here and go back online like this right here and reboot your server from that. Change server IP. This is how you change your server IP and the default port. I already have the port bot, but if you want to change the IP, just go in here, put in the IP that you want, and then click apply, and it costs 6,000 credits, I think. 6,000 or something like that. I'm not exactly positive. You have to just check. This right here, you can actually buy a domain name for your server where you can create a website, and that'll be your do donate name domain name voice server I guess this is like TeamSpeak for your server I don't actually use it don't have it so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like TeamSpeak and you can get a forum for your server as well like wiki and stuff also guys with this app every single thing on here has a Wikipedia page so if you don't know how to do something there's pretty much a Wikipedia page for all the features on here and also there's network transfer where you can transfer the network to someone else or something else now, there's mini games and stuff on here. We all know we love mini games. Mini games can be very, very fun. Factions, Sky Wars, Hunger Games, Monster Hunt, Monster Arena, Hide and Seek, ton of different mini games. Pretty sure the developer is going to add more. I'm not positive on that, but it seems like you will eventually because there's not too many here. And I would like to see Skyblock. Personally, I would like to see Skyblock because I really like Skyblock. One of my favorite. And maybe even Bounty Hunter or Bed Wars or something like that. Or Capture the Flag. Just some more mini games, I think. Now here's some of the maps and stuff that you can buy. If you don't want to build a map, you can buy a map. I'm going to look into some of the survival maps. Like here's Apocalyptic City. This is like a Sky Survival Islands. This is not Skyblock because Skyblock one is right here. This is a Skyblock World Survival War. This is why I think there should be a Skyblock minigame because there is a Skyblock World. So I think if you set a minigame, that would be very, very cool. Uh, this is like Survival World. Like... Pretty cool survival base. I bet you could set each one of these portals and take you to a different like location. That'd be pretty cool. And then there's the witch's curse. I'm not exactly sure what this is. What is going on here, to be honest? But this is just some of the maps. We're not going to go into all of them because there's a ton of maps that you can get. Like 12, 12 adventure maps. There is 21 lobby maps. That's a lot. Four mini game maps and 33 random maps. But anyway guys, really hope you found this video helpful and you consider checking out the website and creating your own server in 2018. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you love, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video guys. Thanks for watching.